show presented by the UNCG Alumni Association and happy holidays everyone. Coach, we want to start off with a little bit of holiday trivia. So here's how it's going to work. I have a few questions for you about gifts that your players have received and you're going to try to guess who got the best and worst gifts. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I have the quiz right here. Whose best gift was the scooter? Was it Deontay, RJ, Marvin, or... I have to say, uh, RJ there. Deontay. Mm. See, that was a little bit of a trick question because he has a hoverboard. That's know? right. I was, right. I was thinking along those lines. <laughs> that might have been the hardest one. Okay, next one. Um, best gift train tracks. Was it Marvin, Malik, Demetrius, or Deontay? Train tracks? Yes. None of them. I can't imagine who, who would have said that. So I'll take a shot in the dark <laughs> and, and say Malik. There you go. Good there guess. Go. There you go. <laughs> All right. 25% chance. <laughs> Next one, best gift. This is where it gets weird. A personal foot massage? Is that RJ, Malik, Deontay, or Marvin? I could pick all of them for that because I think they'd all like that as a gift. Um, I'm going to say Marvin on that one. Hey, you're right again. There we go. I think he knows his players. First pair of Jordan. Last one for best gift. Demetrius, Deontay, Marvin, or Malik? Demetrius, all day. There you go. <laughs> Demetrius again. <laughs> okay, now for worst gifts. An ugly yellow coat. Was it Deontay, Malik, RJ, or Marvin? Hmm. I'm, I'm going to say, uh, take a shot. This is a stab here. That's tough. I'm going to say Deontay. How are you so good at this? Yeah. He's a fa he, he's, he, he takes pride in his fashion, so. You're not supposed to do this well. <laughs> okay, next one. And a little bit boring. I don't have a worst gift. Was that RJ, Deontay, Demetrius, or Marvin? You know, I could see Marvin or RJ saying that, but I'm going to go with RJ because I just think he likes gifts more than anybody on the team. Am I right? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Demetrius. Demetrius. But that's okay. interesting. R RJ's really good at the whole gift giving or the gift receiving thing. The receiving, the receiving part. Receiving. I know he likes the receiving <laughs> part, yeah. Okay. Worst gift Courage the Cowardly Dog Lunchbox. Malik, Marvin, Deontay, RJ. That's got to be RJ. Got to be. No. Mm. Malik. Malik. Yes. <laughs> I could imagine that's a bad gift for everybody. I don't yeah. know what it is, but it doesn't sound like a it's good like gift. It's like an old Nickelodeon. I think it's Nickelodeon. It's, it's weird. It's really and weird. Just the thought that counts, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he said, and I quote, I've never had a worse gift. I'm thankful and have enjoyed all gifts given to me. Was that Marvin, Deontay, Malik, or RJ? I would hope they'd all say that. Um, but I'm going to go Marvin right there. He's thoughtful. There Marvin's very thoughtful. There you go. You did there a pretty go. good job on this. I'm impressed, Coach. I know the guys. <laughs> Sometimes too well, but I know the guys. <laughs> All right. Well, now that we've gotten rid of the holiday trivia, let's actually get to the basketball part of the show. Coach, you guys came off of an impressive victory last night, 75-73 over UNC Asheville. Um, what went so well in that game? Well, I, you know, I think it was uh, – it was just a good experience for us to have to go play a game on the road mm -hmm. um, against uh, an NCAA tournament team. I mean, that team played in the NCAA tournament last year. Um, they've had a great start to the year. I think we were both 8-3 and three going into the game. So I think that experience for us is, is something that we can benefit from going into conference play. I felt like going into the game, regardless of what happened, we could learn from it. But I do think it'll give us some confidence uh, that we can go into other gyms and get on the road and, and have some success. Uh, what went well is that we competed. Um, I thought we really fought hard in the second half. We stayed together. I liked our mentality as a team in the second half. Um, we made some, some big time plays. They made some big time plays. Uh, but I was just happy with our mentality and our competitiveness. Uh, after grading the film, we're still making a ton of mistakes. You know, I'm, I, I, maybe I, everybody feels that that way in December as a coach, but that gives me great confidence. You know, we're finding a way to win some games, and I don't think we're playing our most sound basketball yet. So, um, I wouldn't say it was the the best game we played. I wouldn't say it was strategically the best game, and mm -hmm. uh, certainly a lot of things we can clean up. But they are competing a lot, and they are playing together. And when they do that, they're going to give us a chance every night. And you mentioned that second half, and part of what was interesting about that game was that they had a couple of runs early in the second half, and you didn't call timeout. You trusted your team, and they ended up doing really well. How has that trust developed this year? Well, I'd like to have my timeouts at the end of games, you know, for situations. And I had two last night uh, in that last minute. 
<clears throat> which is a good situation as a coach. You don't want to have to burn those things uh, early in the second half if you don't have to. Um, so, you know, being able to place it through some things is, is, is a good sign. But we have maturity. I mean, you know, with, with guys like Deontay, and Marvin, and RJ, and Jordy, and even Francis and Demetrius have a lot of basketball under their belt in the Southern Conference. You know, we should be able to weather the storm a little bit. Uh, it, it was a really good experience, something we can build on. A player that really did have some of those great moments you were talking about, James Dickey. He had 15 rebounds, had his first career double-double, and scored 10 points from second chance. Um, basket. So what is it like to see a young player, that redshirt freshman, develop at such an early part in his career? It's a pretty good stat line there. I want to say three assists, one turnover. I mean, that's a pretty good stat line there for, for anybody, uh, much less a freshman. So, uh, you know, I, I don't think anybody's surprised by any means because uh, we see him every day in practice and we know what James is capable of. Uh, but it's really good to see it, you know, translate to a game. I think that'll help James's confidence a lot. He's really given us presence defensively, uh, activity. He just kind of is all over the place um, in, in a good way. And he's really given us a presence on the backboard, especially the offensive glass. And so uh, it kind of came together for him last night, and that's a really good thing to see. Um, but what I'm most pleased with with James, he just keeps working. He's just hungry to improve. He's hungry to grow. You almost got to make him leave the gym. I mean, he called me at you know, 10 o'clock on Friday night. I was about ready to go to bed asking if he could get in the gym and work out. And, and, and that's what you want to see out of your guys. They just want to be hungry to improve. And I think the guys that work like that consistently, it, it tends to work out for them in games. And so it came together a little bit for James. But I don't think that'll be the last time. I think he's going to keep moving and, and forward and growing up as a player. Looking forward, you have your last non-conference game against Georgetown. What's the focus going in? Well, you know, I mean, we want to finish uh, our non-conference slate off the right way. You know, we had a number of goals as a team through this non-conference slate, and, uh, you know, we've, we've taken some steps to accomplish some of those goals. Um, but one of our goals was that we're never going to cross the finish line, that no matter what we do, uh, we still have work left to do beyond that. It's not done because we did something good. I mean, we won our first road game last night. That was a goal for us. Uh, well, the season's not over. It's not done. Um, we've always wanted to, to knock off a BCS team. You know, we have an opportunity to do that on Thursday. Now it's going to be very difficult. I mean, uh, Georgetown had a huge win at Syracuse, which has got to be as difficult a place as there is to play in college basketball. Um, you know, we know how gifted they are. We know about their tradition. But we're going to look at it as an opportunity and, and, and a chance to continue to grow. I know we keep using that word, but that's kind of the theme of this team is we got to have growth on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, we're excited for the opportunity. And I know everybody wants to get home and get some of their mamas cooking for Christmas. Uh, but hopefully they'll wait a couple days before they really get focused on that and we can, we can finish off this non-conference slate. Thank you, Coach. That's all we have for you today. We're looking forward to seeing you guys at home against Sanford on the 31st. That game will be ESPN3, and it's the first conference game at the Coliseum. Thank you again for your time. Happy holidays. If you want to stick around and see childhood friends James Dickey and Demetrius Troy talk about their experience, stick around after the break. Add big flavor to your next get-together with Subway Catering. Featuring good-to-go boxed meals with a side and freshly baked cookie, crowd-pleasing giant subs, and piled-high sandwich platters overflowing with flavorific choices. All made the way you say with everything you love, like jalapenos and chipotle southwest sauce. Subway Catering is simple and satisfying, a great value for any budget. Just call 877-360-CATER or visit Subway.com and let us take care of any occasion. Subway, cater fresh. Hi, I'm Barbara Corcoran. To sell your home on time for the most money, you need a sharp agent with a marketing strategy that creates the most demand. Bottom line, you need a partner willing to put their own money on the line for you. In Greensboro and Winston-Salem, it would be Jason Bramblett. He attracts hundreds of buyers and creates so much demand that Jason can guarantee if your home doesn't sell at a price and deadline you agree to, he will buy it. Partner with the agent I trust. Go online or call and get your home sold. I, I was just asking myself, who is this goofy dude trying to play with us? We met at the, uh, the boys club on Raleigh Boulevard. I, wanted, I didn't know if he was good in basketball or not. And then, so I think like we, like we immediately like played one-on-one. -on -one. 
like when, like when we met. Cause we, we was at the Woods Club and like we were kind of bored, so like we just hooped and then I got to see if he could shoot or whatever and then he just got cool or whatever. At that Boys and Girls Club, Troy found his Tim Duncan and Dickie found his Tony Parker. The combo was complete and the duo began running the courts throughout Raleigh. We'll wake up, we'll hit, each other, hit people up like we're people hooping out today. We'll go hoop probably at like 12 at the Y. And then probably like 3, we'll go hoop somewhere else. And then we're going to end this probably at like lifetime where we'll go hoop at like 7. The pair not only dominated the summer pickup games, but they also proved to be a force for Team Loaded on the AAU circuit and at Word of God High School. With their success piling up, the Raleigh natives refused to split for college. We were just counting all the offers that we had together. So I mean, as the year went on, we got like 8 or 9 offers together and we decided that USG was the best fit for us both. It was smooth sailing for the duo when they arrived on campus in 2015, but they hit a rough spot when they both were determined to be ineligible for their first college season. Honestly, it was, it was very stressful. Uh, it, was, it was one of the more harder times of my life. So much training and everything to, to be ready for that day and for it to be, able, for it to be just decided by another man was 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 pretty stressful. Troy was later cleared by the NCAA and went on to average six points per game for the Spartans. Dickey, on the other hand, wasn't so fortunate and took a redshirt season. I was mad for like a good two weeks, three weeks, and I went to the I went to the um, I went to the game and I was like, dang man, I like I really want to be out here, da, da, da. but like I just like <clears throat> so I'm just clicking my head like I mean forget it like you you can't just keep thinking about what, what should happen or whatever, and my boy playing, so I mean, that's all that really matters. Dickey used the year away from the game to get stronger and develop his skill set to become more prepared for this season with his friend, Demetrius. I love it just because I'm able to kind of help introduce him to college basketball, and I feel like it's a good thing that I have at least a year under my belt to where I can definitely help him out and try to help him have an even better freshman year than he would have had the year before if he was eligible to play. Then the day finally came, November 14th, where Dickey would take the floor for the very first time. That whole day, I didn't really think about it too much. I didn't even listen, listen to no real hype music. I was just real chill. When I got on the floor, I actually like, it, it didn't like hit me like the game was going too fast. Like I, I feel like it actually worked. Like I was just acting like I was in a regular game. For Dickey, it was just like being out on the courts of Raleigh. With Troy, the duo's chemistry is a big reason why the Spartans are thriving this season. I like to consider myself a leader, so the fact that we're able to impact the team so quickly in our college careers is definitely a very, very cool feeling. I could just be moving around or whatever. I mean, he's like that. That's the type of point guard he is. Like, he'll find you. Like, you just got to be ready. So he'll definitely he'll, he'll find you if you're open. Especially on, like, little lobs. He's done found me about, like, two or three lobs this year that it was just, it wasn't part of the play. I'd just be roaming around and he'll just wish like, I'd come there like, yeah, go ahead, throw that. And I'll get it. So the next time you see Demetrius line up a perfect alley-oop pass to his friend James, well, that's a play that's about seven years in the making.